hello hello and welcome to part two of our workshop webinar thing so we're going to continue on from where we left off and i will be showing a few sped up clips for you because i have done a few things off camera um and i'll talk about those in just a second but for now i just want to show you what i have so far so we ended last time by creating a form, right? Some sort of a, just a generic sub D geometry, sub, sub D form, right? And what I did off camera was I just chose a site for that form where, where it's going to be placed. And I kind of did it during the, the, the recording, the first part recording as well. Um, I zoomed into it and I did view capture to file for you know, to, to, to get the lines out of it, to, to move it into Photoshop, because I want to sketch, right? And then I added, I added the uh, Google Earth imagery. <coughs> Sorry, something in my throat. Uh, I've added Google Earth imagery um, to it, just to give me a, like a broader understanding of where the trees are and whatnot because some of the trees didn't get mapped and I moved in my shape, right? So this is my little building form. From there on out, I started sketching and that's the sketch that I've made. And on top of it, I've added some digitalization, you know, to, to kind of um, fix my ideas in place. Let's call it like that. And this is still a sketch. By no means is it a drawing, right? But it it helps me to think while I draw. So that's why I do it this way. Your approach might be different. And that is exactly why I want to show you a sped up version of it, right? Just to, to kind of show my thought process and how I, how I sketch. Um, also, it's not pretty. We will take care of the prettiness later. But that, that is, it is what it is. Oh, one more thing. Um, all of the sped up clips, like anything that I do that is going to be sped up, I put a limit onto myself that it's never going to exceed 30 minutes, half an hour for me, right? So just keep that in mind. Like everything that you see sped up during this workshop is, is it has a limit of 30 minutes, right? So... I guess now I will show you the, the, the clip and then I will explain uh, why I sketched the things that I did.
So let me explain the thought process. Basically, we have two, two arteries here that I want to anchor myself to. Uh, one of them is, can I make this bigger? Just a second. That's a tab. That's caps lock. Um, God. Every time. Every time. Okay, this is good enough. You can see the mouse. So, um, the arteries, right? We have one here, one street here, and another one here. So I want to kind of anchor myself to them. And I have three types of uh, flow of uh, how, how I envision this, this building will be serviced and how people will arrive to it. First uh, way is by the bus. You know, people can arrive by the bus, they get dropped off, um, Actually, the, the, the bus stop is even lower than that. It's somewhere here. And then they take um, this path, right? So this is the path. And you can see I've added like this little pedestrian path right here to it. And not only that, but also I have continued it right here. And also continued it along the way here just so that people can walk wherever they please i am thinking of adding a pathway here as well but we'll see we'll see that's a later consideration then i thought about the plaza or piazza um like the main area main outside space right before you enter the building and i'm thinking of just mirroring the be behavior the, the aesthetics of the building and creating a two-dimensional representation of that or 2.5d representation of that is a good enough solution okay so that's with the pedestrians then we have the service so servicing of uh, the cafe you, you have like trash not extraction i don't know how to call that like the, the, the trash car right emptying the trash bins and and whatnot so that is going to ta be taken care of by in in this area right here right so you have like th this is going to be the, the the service area as well as the pedestrian area which means that the um the road which is here is not going to be that active it's only going to be active during the you know the service hours and besides that the pathway is going to be pretty kind of only used by the pedestrians <clears throat> okay so that's that and then we have the parking for the visitors and i i feel like the parking should be bigger and we might just make it bigger it's kind of easy to extend this later but for now it is what it is and the parking um and the, the way the visitors arrive is to, to that visitor parking is by taking this road right here, then bending over, right, like so, and parking here, right, in, in, in this area. So it's, it's, it's a weird um, space to park, but I feel like it's going to be pretty easy to uh, divide all of this up into like regular parking spots and by just changing the proportions a bit make it <clears throat> easily easy to navigate i might up i might end up creating a direct connection here later down the line but we'll see anyway so that's that's the strategy very simple you know public parking service parking pedestrian path plaza right next step is to actually uh, create a two-dimensional drawing from this you know this is a sketch and we need and we need it to be 2d a 2d drawing and i have done that this is how it looks like and the way i've done that is well i will be showing you a sped version of it again because it took me 30 minutes but it's literally just me um taking the polyline tool and just drawing out uh, let's go for top view where are we? Hello? Too much stuff. Uh, let's hide CAD data. Let's hide my landscape. And let's... Yeah, let's keep everything else. <clears throat> so I've, I've 
I drew, you know, just on top of this uh, image right here. And this is the image that I got from, from Photoshop, right? Uh, with a few minor adjustments here and there, you know, so a few a few lines were kind of misplaced. I really <laughs> miscalculated the thickness of this path that uh, the cars will need to take and, and, and whatnot. But all of it kind of will be able to merge up. Oh, by the way, the, the bus stop was here. Uh, so all of it will be able to eventually merge up with the surrounding uh, city grid or whatever have you. It's all drawn in 2D right now. It's all flat, right? And uh, keep in mind, the landscape is not flat, right? It's it's above, you know, in, in a layer above. And I still have, bam, I have the landscape uh, surface here. But I am drawing everything in two dimensions because all I care about right now is different areas and how those different areas are going to be kind of trimmed away with these, oops, that's wrong, with these curves. Um, one thing that I did that you will probably, if you do this in sub D, um, that you will need to do is I creased literally everything on this sub D geometry. So now tab, when I press tab, it doesn't change the, it doesn't smooth out. Right. And the reason why I did that was because I needed a very clear outline. Where is it? Hide. I needed a very, very clear, clear outline of where the building, and don't worry that it's a double line, uh, where the building intersects with the ground plane. Right. I needed that to be as clear as possible. And we have it. Um, then I offsetted this outline by 20 centimeters, but I will explain that in, in, in just a second. Um, for now, I think, uh, it makes sense to now show you the sped up version of me creating all of this and then explaining uh, certain key, key points of it. And then we will continue on. Okay, so then let's go. Key things that I showed there was um, 
wait just a second where is my building there it is so key things that i showed there was me uh, taking an image right me scaling that image to the correct size that was very important right so this i scaled it to the correct size by using the scale tool well first by measuring the distance between these two trees right here distance uh, from midpoint here to midpoint here 38.31.825 uh, meters then zooming in here and scaling this image uh, scaling this image by giving it a base point that's in the middle of this tree giving a reference point that is right here right so now i'm scaling between them and then typing in 38.825 or sorry 31.825 right and then i got the at least you know a, a good enough uh, good enough scale of the image right so that it's it's pretty exact maybe not perfect but pretty exact uh, from there on out, all I did was just kind of draw everything and thought about the turning radii and, and, and whatnot. All of the steps here are, um, they can fit, this one can fit one car, this one can fit two cars and so on, right? So it's it's all kind of done according to, I'm sorry, according to the proportion of a car. I still think that we will need more stuff here but that's that's fine that's fine we will be able to add more parking um, later down the line okay so now 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 we need to create a 3d geometry from this oh uh, one more thing that i almost forgot the way i've created this um outline of where the building meets the ground right the way i did that was by using the section tool right so you can easily do let me just make a copy of this to show you i have the building right here right i go to front let's say where's my yeah there, there we go right here section so i select it type in section uh, it asks me for start of the section and right now I'm just going to make a weird one, right? So I just draw a, a weird line through it Hit enter and now if I look at it in perspective I have myself uh, a section of the building made there um, In my case, I needed the section to match up with where it's intersecting with the uh, how do you call it the the, the, the image right with, with the ground with the zero 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 height of of the um of the ground uh so i just had to move the building up and down until i figured out you know that it looks nice and then i made a section through it um by anchoring i can show you like that section from here to here just makes a makes a nice little section for you through that portion of the building all right so that's definitely nothing nothing special okay so last thing that i kind of want to explain is why did i crease everything for my sub d geometry for my building and the reason behind that is i wanted to like if i remove crease right I remove crease so if everything is uncreased and then i make a section through this uh, wait i need to let's do that bam i get the smooth version right the smooth section through the building uh, the problem with that is i am going to connect the building to the landscape directly with you know sub d polygon so the building will become the landscape and i can't really do that like so right when when it's all smoothed i need a pretty sharp um 
edge not edge what am i saying i need a pretty um i need the the, the, the outline to be in the exact position where my polygons are before they are smoothed because that is the mode in which i'm modeling who made it <laughs> managed to explain it okay so that's what we're gonna do right so let me we don't need the image anymore i'm going to hide it though i'm not going to disable it and we are still going to model everything flat right everything is going to be flat so make sure that your lines uh like these lines are all you know they're not three all over the place that they are flat and what's going to really help you <clears throat> if the altitude if the height of these lines are kind of pushed down to zero height uh, you can kind of do it if you just select everything and type in project to C plane enter delete input objects yes that is going to project all of the geometry to the C plane all right so from here on out we are going to say oh this is gonna be a rough one so unfortunately all of this that is for at this stage of 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 modeling everything that is below the section line is going to be not destroyed but um it's it's it, it's it's gonna be messed messed up um we are going to disregard it because we are going to treat the building top as if it's an extension of the landscape right so we can't have it bending downwards well except for this plaza here we will try to manage somehow anyway uh, the way you begin is by creating a loop a protection loop around this geometry right here and the first thing that I want to kind of check is if there are any instances where a curve just arrives at, at the face and there is no polygon where it could be um, added, right? Because imagine it this way. Um, if I were to create a face here, like that, let's do that. And I create another one here, whatever, here, like that. Then we will have, you know, the, the same problem of this not being able to connect to this because there is no vertical edge here. So we need to fix that. And the way we do this is quite simple. We just insert edge, right? So I just select all of these, um, edges here control shift click 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 and i type in insert edge i just go until it matches up and keep in mind that here since the mode is set to absolute it works as if it's an offset we don't want that so i want to change the offset mode to proportional so now it's kind of you can see how it how the behavior differs right and i'll just kind of anchor it let's see to here excellent that's all we need and it's increased but we don't care uh, we only needed to everything to be creased just to get that uh, that line right there by the way speaking of the lines i feel like these could be just locked so that we don't mess it up and as for the layer i'm just going to create a new layer that's a sub layer create a new layer and i'll just call it um sub d landscape sub d landscape make it uh don't even know orange sure let's try orange maybe that's gonna be a fun color to work with and yeah from there on out all you all you'll be doing is just creating a perimeter around the building where everything kind of matches up right so let, let's let's begin doing that slowly 
um, this point right here. Well, we, we will need, by the way, we will need to match up these points with the height as well, but that's going to come in later. So let's do a 3D face, you know, sub D tools, that, that guy right there, 3D face. And let's just create one polygon right here. Something like that. That's good enough. I will fix the proportions later. Okay, so we have one there, then one is going to be here, like that, and one is going to be here. <clears throat> okay. You can see I'm, I'm kind of going around this whole thing, but I'm also, I'm keeping the distance here. That's why I did the offset, right? So there is a little bit of a gap. We will talk about the gap and we'll work with the gap in just a second. Okay, so we have that, then here we will need a polygon, like that. So I'm just kind of trying to match up <clears throat> the polygons with where they should connect in, 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 in here, right? So this edge will go on, will arrive here and will bend. This edge will go on, arrive here and it will bend out and so on. Right? So this is going to be a little bit weird, but I think we will, the way we will do this is if I just add it here and we make it like that. And then this one, one, two, three, four, there we go. This one does that. Then this should work. These should connect, right? And so on. So I'm, 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 I don't know if I should speed this up or if I should kind of show a few more steps here. Maybe I should. Um, or let's speed speed up this process and if there is anything that I want to mention I will not pause the video but I'll kind of stop the sped up version and then we will kind of uh, I'll, I'll explain it so for now let's speed it up For instance, here, uh, did this area right here, I can see that there is going to be, you know, this edge, which is taken care of by this, right? So these two will merge, or rather this point with this edge will merge. And then this edge, I will probably, yeah, that, that's just going to merge with this, right? But then I need to take care of these two, right? Which is, uh, which is definitely a problem. Um, but I'm not solving it right now because I, I think that um, there there are different, like, there's more ways uh, than one on how to solve it. Of course, easiest one would be just to create these kind of long polygons here, you know, two more uh, long edges here. Um, but I feel like once we start kind of modeling the whole thing all together, uh, we'll be able to solve this by adding one more edge loop right here and somehow protecting that border and creating a few triangles and thus keeping this area pretty big, uh, so unsubdivided. The rule of thumb is to have the least amount of polygons that you possibly can, right? Uh, because the more you have, the less control you have. So that's... or no, uh, that's that's incorrect. You still retain control, but changing things takes longer and longer the more polygons you have. Okay, so that's that was just one thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, one more thing is a command that I didn't show you before, 
<clears throat> and that is called append append face select meshes or subdues to append to so let's say i select this face right here right enter and then it's going to ask me to pick a point right so what append does it creates a polygon just what we're doing right now but it automatically will join it to the geometry right so i could say for instance uh while the append phase command is running instead of picking a point i will say that it's from an edge so from edge yes i will select this edge right here and now you can see that it's going to join to this particular edge and what i can do then is specify that it's gonna need to join here right and that's it i pressed enter and now it's it's created and then i can choose you know another edge and I can join stuff to it as well. Let's just see if I'm able to. Yeah, like that. Enter. And so on. Like the, the, the reason why I didn't show you a pen phase before was because it's very easy to create pentagons here. Because after giving it two extra points, uh, it's still going to ask you for, you know, one more and then one more and one more. Um, and so it feels like it's while it's faster um it doesn't have restrictions uh as to you know creating end gods that's that's about it but if you'll notice me using a different kind of tool that's just me using a pen face um also for instance here um the way i would tackle this is i would create a single polygon here like that right but then we need you know two more edges here so i would just do insert edge from this edge right here click here insert edge again if you hit enter it repeats the last command you used right so you don't need to type in insert edge or anything you know ma ma many times you just kind of hit enter uh, to repeat it and then if we join this up it should be happy yeah as long as you snapped properly if you haven't snapped properly then you can still uh, in wireframe view uh, from left to right select the vertices with ctrl shift and type in stitch right to stitch them together but in this case it joined up nicely so i don't need to do that um join that oops join that i mean there we go so this is what we have so far uh, there's still a uh, few things to do. Um, I, I guess it's going to be like 10 minutes for me to do it. Um, I'm not even going to show you this. I, I At least I don't think I will. Um, because it's the same thing over and over again. So we will just kind of jump, uh, jump ahead a little bit. Okay. So for now this is uh, enough for me to continue on kind of explaining what, what we're doing and uh, oh keep in mind that the sub d tutorial or this version of the approach for the landscape that's just one of many different ways of how you can approach i will show you one more at the end of this uh, day or, or this this video uh, but for now we're, we're kind of sticking with sub d because i feel like it's the strongest uh, way of how you can work with the landscape together with the building okay so this is what I have so far, right? This is my form. And now, now we need to, let's unlock selected. Let's unlock this building. Uh, we need to merge them. We need to merge my building with the landscape, right? And, and figure out how the hell are we gonna do that? So that's going to be um, exciting to say the least um let's let's start thinking so i i think that right now while we still have these two separated is a good time to actually um, project the landscape or not the landscape the sub geometry onto the landscape that we have right onto this surface right here how do you do that well that's that's pretty easy you just type in well 
don't type in you select the geometry that that you will want to project you select the landscape on which you will want to project it keep in mind i'm only selecting the landscape portion of the sub d i'm not selecting the building you select the nerves landscape right and you uh, type in isolate isolate so only these two are currently present on your screen once you've done that you can then uh where was it Ap apologies just a second I believe then you uh, turn on the selection filtering to be only for vertices like that only for vertices so I've, I've used this and then you type in project just project not to see plane but just project select curves and points to project that's great uh, we want to delete the input or maybe we we kind of want to keep the original as well just in case we will want to change anything so let's not delete the input delete input no direction c plane z that is correct loose no output layer current yeah sure we will project it to the same orange layer so with these settings I will drag around my landscape so that it only selects the control points of the landscape or of, of the sub D landscape and I will select curves and points enter I will hit enter and then select surfaces uh, to project onto before I click on this I need to turn off the selection filtering so I'll click this icon first there we go now i can close this and then i will click on the surface and hit enter that's it now this sub d geometry is following the curvature of the landscape and goddamn scone is amazing when it comes down to um how drastic how dramatic the landscape is so this doesn't make a lot of sense in um, this particular site in this particular location but trust me like this approach of first creating the sub d um how is it called um typology sub d typology you know of of uh, all of the polygons following the curves and so on and then projecting them onto a uh, nerves surface this, this works and it looks great it's just that um <laughs> this particular uh, landscape is not that exciting okay let's uh, let's unisolate unisolate right and now we can see our landscape right here that is following the larger one uh, we can actually well for now let's not hide it but i will take my building as well and i will copy it holding down the alt key i will move it up should we we should probably copy it up with a certain um, while anchoring to a certain point so let's let's do it differently select on the flat version select the building type in copy enter vertical lock it to vertical vertical equals yes and then choose one and uh, any point that you want from which you will move so i'm choosing this corner point right here that's the point from which i move and that's i want to move to the same up to the same corner point right here and that's it once i've done that i hit enter or escape and it's it's done Ooh, okay so we have ourselves a landscape that's following the curvature of the existing landscape we have ourselves a building now it's time to actually start merging them up so we don't really need the nerves landscape just now so i'm gonna hide it and we don't need the cad drawings um, so i'm just going to type in cell crv select curve 
SEL CRV selects all of the curves and I'll just lock them just so that they're not uh, so that I don't accidentally select them all right and now now it's time to to mess it all up I guess so I'll begin by where do we begin actually I'll begin by creating the, the, the different altitudes for landscape uh, in, in places where I envision different altitudes should be. So in this case, it's going to be... Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking right now. In this case, my entrance is probably going to be in this area, so I really want to dip down the landscape there. And the way we do that is by just <clears throat> Control shift selecting the, the curves that we will want to dip down and just moving them down. Like that. That's it. We have successfully dipped down the landscape. Um, I'm just wondering, sorry, give me a second. I'm, I'm just wondering if we should do it at this stage or after the merger between the landscape and the building. And for me, it feels like after the merger, it might be even nicer. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that after the merger. So instead, we, we are not going to, <laughs> to dip it down. Instead, we're, we're just going to... Uh, figure out on how we can join these all of these up right so the first thing um let, let's start from from the beginning i guess um you want a horizontal line that will match up with the landscape right and in certain places it's possible in other places it's not right so the the way we will do it is in places where it's possible, I'm just going to straight up use it. And in places where it's not possible, I'm going to create one. And by create one, I mean, you know, do that, that, that. Oh, God damn it. Insert edge is, is what I'm trying to say. Insert edge. So for instance, this face right here, we're going to do this one face at a time. I'm just selecting the horizontal line that I have and I'll just type in insert edge and ju just drag it, drag it down like that. So I get a new edge. That new edge needs to be in the correct height. So I'm just going to take, for instance, this point. I'll type in M, hit enter, V, hit enter m enter v enter and then i can drag it only in vertical until it aligns with or actually that's that's a very bad way of doing it scratch that that's that was stupid no bad teacher no no we don't do that we don't do that instead we will select this point and we'll type in slide uh, the reason why it was bad and um that the reason why my previous version of this was bad was because it would only work with vertical lines with perfectly vertical lines if your line is tilted then as you move the point the line would be tilting even further which is bad so no no, no we don't do that instead we will slide the point along this line and you can see that with slide is sliding but in the wrong direction but that's easy we can just change direction instead of across we go for along and now it slides along and now we can just snap it as easy as that and we repeat it and now of course we need to change the direction to be across that's just how it is and it's a little bit boring but we will need to go through this one little step at a time and for instance this point right here it's going to it's not gonna like it uh, what, what we're what we're gonna be doing with it because um, we inherently here created a pentagon so it doesn't know how to slide 
so you can either uh, fix it, you know, by going around the whole... I'm showing with my finger on the screen, God damn it. Um, you can fix it by going around the whole perimeter and first of all making sure that there is a line along the whole perimeter. Um, or you can, instead of using slide, you can use a ghetto slide uh, where you just select this point, type in M, enter, and as long as you have near snapping turned on, you can kind of uh, move it along this edge, right? As long as you're snapping it and just kind of align it by eye. It's a little bit of a of a crime to do so, but eh, it is what it is. I do suggest um, in, in, instead of doing that, first kind of getting uh, the whole perimeter around, um, and and then sliding it into correct place. That's that's a cleaner way of doing it. So do it do as I say, not as I do, type of a thing. Um, I'm going to insert the edge here, uh, offset mode, absolute, probably. Then here, offset mode, proportional, god damn it, it's, it's a little bit of a mess. Uh, I, I know that there's a gap here, I messed up, but uh, we will need to, we need to be very, very, um, MacGyver-esque with this. Uh, for instance, these two points, I will just simply stitch them. Stitch. Bam. Into one point. And these two points, I also stitch them into one point right here. And then that means this one can slide. Like, like that. Right? So now what I'm going to do is I'll just go, <laughs> I'll go along the perimeter and I will make sure that everything, um, that there is a line on my building where it will need to meet the landscape, right? So that is the next step. Give me a second. There we go. Another 15 minutes uh, has passed and we now have a perimeter around our building. So the way I worked with this, for some reason it doesn't all match up, but we will fix that. Um, the way I, I worked with this mostly was insert edge as well as just simply deleting a polygon in question and then redrawing um, a new polygon that would fit with the perimeter by eye right so there is no kind of magical split button um, that that would work like you could try splitting this you know you draw it like that and then you create a box I'm just going to show you what, what happens when we try to split this geometry. You know, so you draw the box and you have the intersection. So you just do split. This object will be split with this box. Enter. Delete. We have two parts. 
so seems good isn't really good because all of these are now surfaces not sub d geometry right so you would need like an additional a pretty rough additional pass with grasshopper to make this into a, a sub d geometry again which is just faster you know to just go around the perimeter and do it that way clean it up that way also it's good to practice topology either way now we have and let me finally remove remove crease ah uh, yes finally i can remove crease from from the whole object so now we will delete everything that is below our join line right the new line that we've created so Control shift and just selecting the polygons that we don't need and just getting rid of those because those are underneath the ground and they might be something completely different as opposed to what's what's gonna happen what what am i saying like stuff that you design underground can have a different proportion compared to the stuff that you design above ground just because it's you know it's not visual no no one will will see it so you can kind of expand or contract it as much as you want so it doesn't need to follow the visual rules anyway this is what we were aiming for to what why is this not matching up hello you sir need to not be there but rather here there we go so what we have here is a gap between our landscape and our sub -D geometry and all of the points between them match up nicely we really needed that because now the next step is to actually merge these two together finally and we will do that with a bridge command bridge or rather sorry sorry a much easier way of using it is not by first typing in bridge but rather by first selecting the lines so if you are 100 certain that all of your the hell is this Did I mess up here? Feels like I missed. No, no, never mind. I didn't. Um, if you are 100% certain that you have clean um, topology going all around here, and I don't because here I have an edge, but if you are 100% certain, then you can control shift, double click on the two, um, on the two edges here. Like one uh, control shift double clicking selects the whole perimeter right and then typing in bridge and it's going to create a bridge for you between them but in this case i see that here i made a mistake so any bold line that i see now will show that there is some some sort of a mistake by me so here for instance i have two vertices which i will need to stitch together that's that honestly and now i can show you you know let's say i'm 100 certain that these two perimeters are clean double click Control shift double click bridge enter oh they are not so if it doesn't let you bridge that means it's probably th there is probably uh, an issue somewhere and we will find that issue someday <laughs> someday we'll find it anyway for now we can oh it's probably this uh, this area right here not having a line let's do it step by step slowly so one uh, or, or a pair of lines at a time these two get bridged yay first connection these two get bridged and immediately i can see where the where the problem is um 
these two lines need to connect to this one line which is not going to be happening so i will use insert edge i will insert an edge here and i will also stitch these two points together onto this point just like that and now this one can get moved and we just kind of slide it along the edge like that so that they match up and now i can bridge see so i know that i'm not explaining too much in terms of the technology of it um oh yeah there, there we go another problem i'll skip it for just a second another problem i'll skip that we can bridge that so I, i'm skipping all of the problematic areas it's all honestly it's all the thought process rather than some sort of a quick um quick shortcut that will make it magically you know make good geometry button there's no such thing so instead i'm trying to showcase a thought process and that nothing is done automatically if you want something to be done automatically then check out machine learning algorithms and you, you'll you'll see why people are not still not using machine learning algorithms in architectural planning um cell crv let's see there's a few curves here that are left and then let's bridge that bridge that oh here we have also a problem but this one can be easily fixed i i feel like if we just stitch these to the corner like that then suddenly these two can be bridged with these two easy so every single volume every single phase requires a special approach and and requires special consideration for instance here we do have a little bit of a problem uh, which we will fix by just stitching these two together and now these match up oops we don't stitch we bridge right here come on that that with these two with these two bridge there we go more these two these two these two oh, I'll, I'll keep selecting pairs until i will reach a problematic area all of these seem to match up quite God damn it, quite nicely there we go and there we go okay so this whole side was clean and that's because i started from this side um and i wasn't tired bridge enter what uh okay sure it didn't like me bridging that many uh polygons all at once sure we're gonna do it a little bit more manually that's fine i'm just gonna go through them oh, by the way if gumball is in your face just turn it off here in the bottom where it says gumball uh sometimes that really gets annoying oh there is there is a little bit of a of a problem there we just stitched the problem away right so you just select two points which are problematic and you just type in that magical stitch command to merge them into one okay so that that then we do this we do that Ooh, that's a lot of oh yeah wait so that that part is done right yeah yeah this part is done this part is done okay so now we have a few a few decisions to make well first of all this one doesn't we don't need that line anymore right so we can just straight up bridge here then here we do need an extra line i could add it maybe maybe we should add it like that insert edge 
bam like that gets added there's going to be a very complex corner here but uh, that's a problem for future me like that these two with these two bridge bam clean okay and is there anything else like bold lines really help with showing oh yeah, yeah there's an opening there but besides that yeah, it seems like it's it's fine moment of truth we hit the tap button voila everything is joined into one big happy family right so we have ourselves a building with the landscape right now the all of the paths and whatnot they are all um unmodeled right so it's not it's not working properly but at least the building is indeed joined to the landscape and we do have the topology that is following the path so for instance if i were wanted to just make let's say this road you know the road that i had here if i wanted just to make it stronger may make it more apparent i can just um where is it just show me the gumball i could just extrude it up just slightly you know make it elevated just a tiny bit and then inset as a group with 10 centimeter inset hit tab and now it's well it's hard to see uh let's switch over to arctic view yeah a little bit easier to see the the border here right if i wanted to make it a little bit more um how do you call it creasy <laughs> not creasy um sharp a little bit more sharp right if i don't want this to be so smooth i can always bevel you know the different areas so for instance here if i oops that is way too small of a bevel let's make it a, just a tiny bit bigger like that hit tab now you can see there's a sharper crease here while it's kind of softening out there so those kind of little things will come in last uh, for now we don't really there we go we don't really need to ch change it too much because there is I, I still need to build up a little bit more of the landscape like this is not enough um, and once I've done that then we can start detailing but detailing is going to be our day three right so for now um, I, I want to work on this area right here that's the area where i wasn't like the entrance area where i wasn't sure on how to how to solve it or not solve it but how to um, dip it down uh, before but now it should be pretty straightforward if i just it feels like i can do should be able to to do something like this for instance this this uh on, only this place dips down right i drag it down like that i should uh, specify by how much so also one one more note the reason why we have this border right around our building that little offset it protects our building from any influence that we're working with the landscape right so it's it gives you more control basically because it works as a threshold that eats up a lot of pushing and pulling so for instance here if i start oops for instance here if i select these three polygons and i just push them down you can see that the facade of the building doesn't change that much that's because this gap right here eats up a lot of it so keep that in mind 
Okay, so I do need to, first of all, I do need to work on the topology a little bit. So this edge is a little bit annoying. Needs to actually be somewhere here. Something like that. Yeah. Because I will be taking these three and I will be moving them down to, you know, like a, not shoulder blade height, but just below the chest height. So something like minus 1.2 meters. Right? Like that. Oh, that's that's quite, quite, quite a lot. 1.2. How big is the building? Feels like the building is a, is very small then. Well, it is what it is. Now I'm not gonna uh, change it for, for, for this tutorial, but it does feel like the building might be a little bit too small. Oh, never mind. We can dig down, right? So it can be as big as we want it to be. Uh, so 1.2 meters, right, down, like that. And then I will begin stitching polygons together or edges together stitching back like that so that we have something like this maybe this would work right so you walk through the plaza you're able to dip down here and walk out here so maybe that and also get these two edges can also get stitched and honestly let's just see if that's gonna gonna work something like that right just a very soft soft movement down so once i've done that i will reinvestigate again so these polygons what if i say insert edge like that something like this now here we do have kind of a problem but not really because this was a triangle so now it becomes a rectangle again but i do really want this particular area to be flat right the entrance area needs to be flat so i scale it in the z axis to zero just like that and move it down like that perfect so we have ourselves um like a ramping entrance here okay then i wonder if we need in, if, if in this area we need protection, I don't think we do. So I'm just going to stitch um, the, these points and these edges to the back to the facade, like that. And do we need it here? Maybe we do. So I'm going to keep it here, protected. Because then it goes along the perimeter again, right? So we get the, the nice little approach here. Not approach, but uh, sharpness. Nice little sharpness here. All right. So now we have we have this done. We, we have the entrance, which is probably going to be here. And you enter from underneath the building. Let's, let's investigate um, 20 millimeter lens. You go in, you enter. And there is the whole, the whole space here, right? But in this case, we are not dealing with the space just yet. Well, we are, we are kind of dealing with the space, but we are more looking at this as if it's a three-dimensional landscape type of a thing. So this was one of the one of the things I, that I've done, and I will, of course, bridge it bridge it back I'll, I'll close it or let, let's keep it open uh, ju just just for now let's keep it open i will close it a little bit later and uh other 
approaches or other things for instance that i would like to do is uh, protecting this right so lifting this up and and, and creating a <clears throat> i'm sorry uh creating like a visual border uh for the trucks and so on for the service uh machines um also creating a like a wind barrier for this but i can't really do that right because i don't have the the the, the landscape um the, the the rest of the polygons here right so it's it's always we we do need this perimeter to be enclosed right so it needs to be completely uh, to be completely surrounded by polygons for this whole thing to work right now i just created a minimum possible like minimal surface that we can possibly use what i can do though like a small thing that i could do is working on this this area right here like that 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 ah oh, come on i'm gonna i'm gonna select it all there we go because this whole area is indeed surrounded by the the polygons right by by the by the streets so it can work with this separately um and usually the the, the way it works usually the streets do dip down maybe it can do that uh, that that looks like it it it, it would do a ni nicer thing so this this area right here right this is going to be a meadow or you know something soft because we have hard surface pathways here and the road here so this this will need to be something soft um i will save this selection by typing in named selections enter it's going to well for you it's going to open up a new window like that that is not what i wanted to do at all wait where is my named selections window named selections god damn it there it is just be here there we go it opens up this window and then you can save it save selection and i'll say meadow one okay so you can see that it got saved now if i unselect and i do something else you know i i work with this play around with this i can easily reselect everything by choosing meadow one and now it's reselected very very a very good way of how to structure your sub d selection as well as just any other selection you know all of the chairs right can also be a selection uh named selection here so for meadow one i will specify that it needs to dip down i feel like it needs to dip down yeah i think that that's the game plan also this area right here i forgot to bridge come on <laughs> i'm struggling here with selection zoom selected zoom 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 this and this needs to be bridged there we go good because it needs to do the the little you saw it do the little poik pointy thing right let me show again that bonk, that happens because of this uh, re the way it relaxes once we have this enclosed we will need to bring it back but uh if if you want to strengthen it you just need to move this down and it's gonna become stronger right so that's how it works um anyway so for the meadow I will I wonder if I should protect yeah let's protect the boundary of the meadow so I'll do inset and I will protect the boundary by 10 centimeters so 0 0.1 so inset mode group 0 0.1 
and then I will extrude it downwards by minus 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, let's say, something like, like that. And that's it. We, we have ourselves a little, you know, a little meadow right here that is going to be lower than the, the roads surrounding it. And you can play around with what's going on in the meadow as much as you want. For instance, you can say that, oh, this whole portion needs to dip down much more. Like that. Sure, why not? You can do that. Then you can say that this is going to be a pond, for instance. Right? So be, be creative is what I'm saying. Be creative with your approach. Whew. Okay. Um, so for today, in terms of sub D, that is it. Right? In terms of sub D modeling, that is it. We will now move on to NURBS modeling. And this same thing, same, same approach, how I would do the landscape with NURBS. So let's just create a new layer and call it sub d day two and i'll just take all of this good stuff and just add it to that layer and just hide it okay and now let's show selected show the landscape let's find where our NURBS poly surfaces, this little guy right here, um, and let's dra drag it over. Okay, rotate it around, position it as close as possible to to what we what we had before. Be like something like that. Something like that should do the trick right okay and now i'm going to unlock selected i'm gonna unlock these hide that just for a second and i will fix a few things with it so the way you work with nerves is you need all of these curves to form closed regions enclosed regions right so let me explain what i mean by that first of all this is grouped so i'm gonna ungroup this that is not ungrouped that's that was unhide that was a wrong undo uh, hide that ungroup that and we don't really need that great so all of these will need to be their own little region right so for instance here this is definitely not a region right um there are different ways of how you can uh, how you can approach this and also where the hell is my sub show selected is there yeah perfect there is a surface at least here that's great um, I'm just going to make a copy of the surface or uh, even better let me just draw a new one on top of it just so that I, I have the same boundary and then I'm going to hide the, the surface with the picture again so I only have the boundary surface like that and I'll make sure that the lines are extending to the edges of that flat surface right so i'll type in extend and we'll just see if that actually will work um enter for uh, sorry select the surface enter and then click on the curves that you want to extend perfect so we have done that now technically well, two ways, by the way, of how to make boundaries. First way is draw out the boundaries by hand. Second one is take a surface, cut it apart with 
curves and then then extract the outer boundaries of the surface so let's see uh, select the surface type in split select cutting objects all of those curves hit enter drag it up yeah, it seems to be okay seems like it all got separated out except there is no line here and we had a line there okay so there is um only one issue and that was this line let's investigate on why this line failed to cut oh that's why there's a gap here so i'm just going to extend to this line this line there we go and now we should be able to select the surface split select cutting objects all of these curves hit enter bam all of these surfaces are now their own little region right so we don't really need cell crv we don't really need curves anymore but just to have them i will put them in the helper layer change object layer and i'll hide the helper layer just so that it's not in the in the way and i will create a new layer call it helper 2 and make it red there we go make it my active layer and now all of the out outlines outlines yeah that's that's the correct way of saying it all of the outlines of this geometry is going to be placed in the helper two layer so i'm just going to select my geometry type in dupe border duplicate border hit enter you can see that it gives me the outlines that are automatically placed in the active layer delete now we don't need the surface anymore delete that and what we will do next is just project these curves onto this surface right here uh project no not project to seaplane just project these curves enter to this surface enter we're we're golden or flying so we have this what do we do with this well we will need to split apart this surface with these curves right um not really um how do i <laughs> give me a second yes but no there's going to be one more um one more task that we will need to do if i were to show selected remember our building that that is something that we definitely need to have in our landscape right here right our little building zoom selected so the first step is well let's let's match it up first why is it off center did i mess it up probably did if it, if it's off center let's then let's just see if our curves are off center it doesn't seem like they are hmm. anyway um I'll, I'll just position my my building the best way i possibly can feels like this is good enough something like that right I will then select my uh, select my out outer boundary or not even outer boundary select the the surface the whole landscape surface and type in split select cutting objects I will select my red curve so I can do that easily by just right clicking on the layer and choosing select uh, select sublayer objects and hitting enter split failed oh really split let's investigate so if split fails then you will need to do it one um one curve at a time but that's fine split 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 with this 
good split it with that okay so we have that 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 okay it, this one still needs to be split with that great and then the last one here um we will not be using this outer boundary for splitting well we could we could use it but um we will use a different different method so if you were to use the outer boundary you would need to create a little bit of a hole uh for this building to sit in and it would be a whole mess in itself so we're not we're not going to use the outer outer boundary for for this particular task um but we are going to it's a little bit of a mess there okay sure uh i am going to continue splitting so i'll split with this with this into one two three parts and this one is a large boy so perhaps we can yeah sure i'll split it apart with this okay good so now we have all of the actual surfaces split with the curves and we don't need the large one the outside one we will be only working on this then once i've deleted that i will lock my geometry thing uh my my building just for a second i will sell crv select curves and will delete all of the curves that i used i don't need them anymore because everything is already split and it's gonna be easy for me to uh, reconnect everything i will select my shape right here oh sorry all of the shapes all of the landscape shapes i will join them back up but this time after joining them you, you can notice that the edges are still there right so it's a poly surface not a surface anymore that's very important because now we will be able to select different portions of it you know so it's a it's a collection of surfaces once i've done that i will duplicate border so i get the border of this i will drag it down uh holding down the alt key by not a lot just just a tiny bit something like that just make sure that it eats up the the bottom uh like the the, the bottom of the building so let's actually investigate it in the front view like that and i will also scale it along the z-axis to zero so that it's flat so the bottom outline is flat while the top outline is following you know our, our little landscape then i can loft between them you've all done this before right i loft between them i select these both i join them up and i cap I cap the bottom and now it's a closed geometry right this is a closed geometry and the building unlock selected the building is also a closed geometry which means that back to 50 which means that now i can boolean out a form with this building what yes I can boolean union or boolean difference out um, boolean union or boolean difference out like dif different um, portions of the landscape with the building geometry yeah that's that's what i was aiming for <laughs> saying uh before i'll do that um i will scale up the building just for a second i'll, I'll just show you a small little effect that i kind of kind of like so i'll scale up the building by just uh, holding down the alt and shift keys together so i'm scaling and copying at the same time by 1.01 by one percent uh, you could do actually 1.02 uh, two percent might be even cooler so alt shift 1.02 scale it up like that why is it scaling in a weird way 
Wait. Am I lying to you? No, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, sure. Alt shift scale doesn't matter which handle you use. 1.02 like that. So you have a copy and then from this landscape geometry that needs to be closed, you do boolean difference with the building with the scaled version of the building delete input yes enter and it just carves away choose away from the landscape just like that right so what you end up having is maybe i can show this to you in the arctic view you end up having this kind of a nice shadow gap shadow line between the building and the landscape right i feel like it's it's kind of nice kind of neat also works as a as a small protection right um i want to make it stronger though uh so i'm not going to i, I want to make it stronger for 3d printing so i instead of 20 uh, instead of two percent i will all shift scale it by five percent like that uh, that might be a little bit too much we'll see uh boolean difference from this enter with this enter it's not a lightweight uh function so it takes a, a while to calculate but now it's done and just to merge the building with the landscape we'll need to do a few a few extra extra things before i do that though i want to do the uh, make make this dip as we did with uh, sub d and to do that i will probably just copy this so Control shift to select alt drag to copy i'll copy this I'll probably sorry I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here mm. what if we were to say there is a surface right so so just draw any kind of a surface doesn't matter wow surface where the hell is it oh it's on the floor um drag it up nope not like that just move it don't extrude it like that zoom selected and we say that this surface will be tilting by minus uh five degrees just a, a little bit of a tilt just like that right then i'll do planner surface for it so that's actually a surface not a rectangle i'll uh, drag and drop it in to where i want the tilt to happen right here wherever we have the this space right here right so i want the tilt to happen there then i will take this surface and i will rotate so i'll first move it to the correct position like that and then i will rotate rotate it like that so that it fits with the directionality of our geometry right so that's the that's the tilt that we are after and now we need to figure out how do we carve into this you know um so one way to do this would be to take this geometry that we have here you know that the, the the area which we are expecting to carve let me move this away and move this here um, so take this area and copy it upwards just like that right and then make it into a box by just extruding it down just like that 
the building is in the way, I'll hide it for a second. So we extrude it down. And then push it in all the way down here. Just something like this. Okay. It's a little bit hard to, to select. So you, you push it all the way to something like this. I'm basically creating a negative carving volume, right? So my carving volume right now is just digging in, but we need it to be at an angle. And that's exactly why we have the surface that we've created, right? So I extrude it downwards as well, like that. And I'll just use Boolean difference on this geometry, enter with this geometry, enter. So I have a tilting shape. I can see that there's going to be a bunch of issues here, but that's fine. So we have a tilting shape, right? Then I will use Boolean difference again, but this time I will carve into the landscape geometry, enter with my carving geometry, enter. And voila, we have ourselves show selected this we have ourselves a form right that that is tilting downwards and we know for sure that it's five degrees so one problem that you probably can see <laughs> is the fact that we have a ridge here right and that ridge happens because our building is quite an irregular shape and I'm wondering if it's it would be possible to just take this geometry here, take the surface here, untrim, untrim the perimeter of it. Yes, untrim does that. If if a surface is trimmed and you click on the perimeter, then untrim will give you back the original surface. Then we would need to scale it down. So that's not going to really work that well. Because I basically I want to get rid of this. Right? I want to get rid of this. And I want to get rid of it by... I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how. God damn it. I don't know. I want to get rid of it by trimming that's the only way that is the only way we need to trim so i'm going to say okay give me duplicate border give me a border for this right let's uh let's 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 exp not explode but let's get rid of that curve segment and let's get rid of that curve segment so i'm just deleting them uh, selecting them with ctrl shift and deleting them so now we have uh only this u shape here then let's log this just so that it's not in the way then this control point i will move it out quite far like that and that's too much that's way too much i'll move it out like that and also let's go back here top yeah yeah good um so now in the top view i can really see it right this is the ridge which we like the ridge goes here that's the ridge which we want to fix, which we want to uh, trim trim off, right? This this edge right here is the same as this edge right here. And to do so, we need to extend this area. So I'm just thinking, what if I what if I simply do that and then go along here and i know i'm snapping to the weirdest crap right now uh, you know it, it is what it is i 
like that, huh? So it's it needs to. This, uh, by the way, this should work as an explanation why I prefer sub D. Tools. <laughs> yeah, like that. Perfect. Okay. So this doesn't need to exist anymore. Okay, so we have this. All right. And my snapping is great. I, I can see that. I'm just going to scale everything down to zero. So now I have a flat outline like that. Join it up. Then we show selected. Let's just see what we have. We don't have much. Okay. That means we will need to unlock selected. We will need to unlock the, the surface here. The surface here. So that we are able to... This is getting tricky. This gets copied up. Just like that. And now I will be able to untrim it to get it back to its original shape. Project. Come on. Project the curve. Enter onto the shape like that. <clears throat> and trim it again. Just like that. Great. Now I will be able to move it down. Ooh, that that was that was a tricky one i'll be able to move it down now i have the trimming shape right i'll be able to extrude it up bam and do the fancy boolean difference yet again Whew, that was um complicated but you know complicated geometries require complicated methods so now we have ourselves a little bit of a incline here, right? In terms of uh, lifting, pushing and pulling um, geometries, it should behave in a similar way as what as, as how um, regular uh, sub D behaves. Uh, you know, you are able to extrude it. By the way, this is going to be so much more heavier on the computer than sub D. Just keep that in mind. Nerves is very, very heavy. Uh, but it is going to generate double... Um, I don't even know how to call these. Like, when you extrude something down, straight down, it, it generates this kind of a weird double overlapping surfaces because it doesn't really understand what it needs to do with the border so it's uh, you will need to clean up that area as well for what it is right now i i feel like it's fine um one thing that i would do clipping plane um is i would force it into a merge between the surface and the, where where are we there we go there we are between the surface and the geometry because right now there is a gap right there is a gap and you might question how do you merge something like this well it's it's pretty easy really uh you just create a bounding box of of the landscape and just scale it a little bit in the x direction a little bit in the y direction uh, actually more because you only care about the bounding box around your uh, building where, where the building touches the landscape just like that and then you scale down the bounding box so that maybe I can show this to you with the clipping plane again three point here 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 move it in so this is the bounding box that we have created and manipulated this one right here so what i'm doing is i'm basically trying to find um, a height at which the bounding box will not show up or maybe that is your plan for instance here you want an area to be actually um, 
horizontal then you can do that same thing here right with the bounding box um so I'm, I'm filling in essentially this area right and once i've done that then i can just select all three of these objects and use boolean boolean union then wait 50 years there we go that's done and just have it have it all connected into one closed poly surface that you will be able to work with like continue work wor working with um what else like the way i would add um thickness to to my you know parking lots and roads and and so on would also be with boolean union so for instance here this this uh, this whole area here right i just copied it upwards by Control shift selecting alt copying you know up you can always explode and work with them separately as well but this is what i prefer to do so copying them upwards um duplicating the border of it right so I, I i get the border offsetting the border inwards by 0 0.2 let's say 0. 0. 0.2 meters yeah 20 centimeters just a second okay sorry about that that was a phone call that i had to take anyway um once you have the outer boundary uh, you can offset it inwards and notice how you know when you offset it by 2.5 or sorry 0 0.2 um, it might end up creating these really weird um, loops and that is expected that happens because this is not a flat polyline anymore right it's rather uh, twisted, like three-dimensional polyline. So every time when it needs to offset inwards, it's going to do this. There are two ways of how you can fix this. One is with Grasshopper and with a plugin called Clipper. <clears throat> but I feel like it's much, much faster. Oops. It's much, much faster to do it with the version or way number two, uh, which is just straight up Rhino. You take this polyline, right? That is all three dimensional, and you scale it in z axis to zero. So you flatten it, and then you use offset on it. And lo and behold, once you do that, then all of the corners are suddenly solved. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, much, much faster. Anyway, when, once you've done that, once you have a smaller polyline, then you will need to project it onto oh, sorry project the curve onto back onto the surface just like that so now we don't need these two anymore and you take the surface you split it with the new curve delete the curve and now you can do whatever you want with these so i'm going to say um this one like the inner one the asphalt so there's the asphalt and there's the border right so the asphalt is going to be extruded up by 0 0.1 10 centimeters right just an extrusion by the way you can use extrude if you want to do it with a command but i prefer to use the gumball just faster and the border will get extruded by 5 centimeters more, 0 0.15. Enter. Right? So now we have these two geometries here. And I'm just going to take them, move them down, back down to where they were. So from point to point, I just move. And I will just use Boolean union to union them together and just pray. Because the more you use boolean operations the less likely they are to work it is what it is you know it is what it is seems like it worked you can always by the way check if it worked or not by typing in what and then 
selecting the object, typing in what and seeing if it's a valid polar surface, closed, solid polar surface. If it's not closed, you will not be able to 3D print it. But all in all, we have successfully created a border here. We will make the, a similar aesthetic for the NURBS version, oh, sorry, for the SUBD version as well, but that's going to be on day three. In, in regards to NURB, uh, sorry, in regards to SUBD, um, SUBD day two, there we go. I will still, I will do a few things off camera, right? And one of the most important ones uh, that I'm going to do is going to be build up the polygons for the rest of the rectangle right so that everything kind of matches up and once i have the borders uh, sorry the all of the polygons once this is a rectangle then i will do you know i will protect the borders for instance of this um parking lot right here and then we'll do the damn it's hard to do think anymore okay I'll, I'll need to stop recording because my, my my mind is going um i will rebuild the same approach as what we did with the nerves geometry uh right now i will do the same thing with sub d but that's going to be on day three right now if you are at this stage with your projects uh you're on good pace you're you're fine um in terms of using grasshopper you you probably will will notice that we haven't used and i'll move this away just like that uh you will probably notice that we haven't used really used grasshopper that much right uh for anything that we did here and that is yeah that's that's expected you only need to use grasshopper either for optimizing or, or or for functionality that is not present in rhino and everything that we've been doing so far the functionality is present in rhino that is not to say that for you as my students you should not try to find forms that can only be done via grasshopper i will help you do those but my suggestion at the start is to model rather than try to simulate something uh, you will have much more control by modeling rather than using a grasshopper script to generate complexity i think that is that for today make sure that everything connects that your building is a part of the landscape and the landscape is a part of the building in my opinion, uh, sub-D is a much, much better um, way of modeling the landscape than nerves. But, you know, for each their own, I guess. We're done. We're done for today. I will see you the next one. Tomorrow, actually. Okay, bye.